here are the problems from the problem set 5 on current electricity question 1 the heating element has a resistance 9.6 ohms what's the current when it's connected to a 240 volt source okay and how much charge passes through the element in 50 minutes direct question because you have the resistance there 9.6 ohms you have the voltage got to find the current apply ohms law i is equal to v by r and you get voltage is 240 resistance is 9.6 you divide you get 25 ampere the b part says how much charge passes through the element in 50 minutes time has got to be in seconds and i is q by t so charge is the product of current and time and 50 minutes in seconds will be 50 times 60 so we get 75,000 coulombs okay brings us to the second one a hundred watt light bulb has a resistance of about 12 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius 140 ohms when it's hot estimate the temperature of the filament when it is hot assume an av assuming an average temperature coefficient of resistivity 0 0.0060 per degree Celsius so in this one we have R naught and we have RT now that's the formula RT is the resistance at uh, uh, the high temperature which we do not know and R naught is the resistance at 20 first what I'm doing is I'm rearranging it in such a way that I make T minus T naught the subject so now to find T take T naught to the other side which means you add T naught to that and then substitute the values given you will get 1797.8 degree Celsius number three calculate the ratio of the resistance of 10 meters of aluminum wire 2 millimeter in diameter to 20 meters of copper 2.5 millimeters in diameter and you're given the resistivities of aluminum and copper now this is a comparison problem you gotta find the ratio so let us set it up as a ratio we know resistance is rho L by A therefore for aluminum it's going to be um, the row of aluminum times the length of aluminum by the area of cross section for copper it's going to be the same thing so when you divide one by the other this is what you're going to get the length is 10 by 20 and area is pi r squared that's why you find it here it is pi times r squared it has to be in meters so we can cancel the pi the 10 to the negative 3 and uh, so you get 1.25 squared is 1.5625 now those are the resistivities And of course, uh, 10 by 20 simplifies to 1 by 2. So that's what you have here. And finally, you get 1.232 as the ratio. Number four, you, f you buy a 75 watt light bulb in Europe where electricity is uh, delivered at 240 volt. And if you use the same light bulb in the United States, 
at 120 volt how bright will it be relative to 75 watt 120 volt bulbs now the question itself says that the resistance of the bulb does not change so first let's try to find the resistance of the bulb power is v squared divided by the resistance so from that you can rearrange and find the resistance get it as 768 ohms and in the US the power is going to be again we use the same formula but this time the voltage is 120 and uh, we got the resistance as 760 so we use that there and you get 18.75 watts this could have been done simply as a ratio problem because when the voltage becomes half the power becomes one-fourth so it could have been done directly like that. Number five, what is the total amount of energy stored in a 12 volt 85 ampere hour battery when it's fully charged? Okay, so you see this is a new unit, ampere hour. It's the product of current and time. So that must be charged, right? Okay, to find energy, we know power is energy over time. So energy is power multiplied by time, but power is the product of voltage and current. And uh, here we have the voltage as 20, I mean 12, the current is 85, and uh, the time is 1 hour, because it's 85 ampere hour. So if you are taking a current of 85 amps, it will only work for one hour. And one hour is equal to 3600 seconds. So we get 3.672 times 10 to the 6 joules. Well, we don't need that. Okay, let me scratch that out. But just understand that if we were drawing a current of 1 ampere, just a current of one ampere from this then it would work for 85 hours which means that the product of the current drawn and the time for which it works would be 85 so that's how we get this a power station delivers 620 kilowatts of power at 12,000 volt to a factory through wires with a total resistance 3 ohms. How much less power is wasted if the electricity is delivered at 50,000 volt rather than 12,000? Now how is electricity wasted? It's in the form of heat and the heat produced is given by I squared RT. Okay, so that's the idea. In the first uh, case, let's see the power is 620 kilowatts, voltage is 12,000, resistance is 3 ohms. But from the formula, power is voltage times current, we can find the current. 620,000, because we change kilowatts into watts, divide by 12,000, you get the current is 51.67 ampere. And therefore, the power wasted is. I squared times R because that's the formula for heat produced. You get 8009 joules wasted. But if the voltage used was 50,000, then the current would have been smaller. Now we find the current is only 12.4 ampere. And therefore the power wasted would be 12.4 squared times 3. 461.3 watts so the change or the difference is 7547.7 so now we know that whenever electricity is transmitted across those cables it has to be done at a high voltage so that the current is as small as possible why should the current be as small as possible? So that less power is wasted. Number seven. 
a 5.80 meter length of a 2 millimeter diameter wire carries 750 milliampere current when 22 millivolt is applied to its ends. The drift speed is given, find the resistance, the resistivity and the number of free electrons per unit volume. Okay, resistance is just voltage divided by current. And uh, let's do that first. Resistance is voltage divided by current. 22 millivolt is 22 times 10 to the negative 3. 750 milliampere again is 750 times 10 to the negative 3. So we get 11 by 375 ohms as the resistance. Now to find resistivity, it's R times area of cross section divided by the length. We already got the resistance is 11 by 375. The area of cross section is pi R squared. Length is 5.8, so you get 1.589 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meter. And then to find the Number of electrons, we use this formula, I is equal to NAVE, make N the subject, substitute, current is 750 milliampere, you have the area of cross section is pi r squared, drift velocity is given, and then multiply with the charge of the electron. Oh, that's not clear, I'm going to write that again. Okay, let me write this again, so that is pi times, yeah, radius squared times the drift speed times the charge of the electron. And you get 8.776 times 10 to the 28 electrons in one meter cube. All right, number eight, 115 volt fish tank heater is rated 110 watts. Calculate the current when it's operating and its resistance. Straightforward question. Power given, voltage given. To find the current, you just divide the power by the voltage. So it's 110. Divide by 115.96 ampere. And resistance is voltage by current, so that's quite simple. 119.80. Ninth one, an 1800 watt arc welder is connected to a 660 volt RMS. AC line calculate the peak voltage and the peak current. Now in AC we know that uh, RMS voltage is peak voltage divided by square root 2. That's an important formula there. So from that rearrange and find the peak voltage 933.4 volt and uh, the power, RMS power, is the product of RMS voltage and RMS current. Therefore, from that you can find the RMS current. 1800. See, so what's given is always the RMS power, 1800 watts. right? And then you can find the RMS current by using peak current divided by root 2 oh, that was ampere and this is now 2.73 times square root 2 3.86 ampere the last one compute the voltage drop along a 26 meter length of household number 14 copper wire the wire has a diameter 1.628 millimeter and carries a current 12 amperes. Now voltage according to Ohm's law is the product of current and resistance. In this case the resistance is not given so first we got to find the resistance. 
and uh, resistance is given by rho L by A. Rho is the resistivity which will be given and because this is copper just took the value of resistivity times the length divided by pi times the radius squared. So 2.51 volts. Alright, thank you.